This is graphing logarithmic functions. All right, so we have seen horizontal asymptotes. Now we're going to have vertical asymptotes. We've had domains that were all real numbers and ranges that are restricted. Now we have the reverse. We're going to have vertical asymptotes and a restricted domain while the range is all real numbers. Okay, so this is going to be the basic shape of a logarithmic function. It's just going to go up through here. Okay, and the only thing I'm going to ask you to identify is the x-intercept. I'm sorry, I'm going, to, I'm going to ask you to identify the vertical asymptote, the x-intercept, and the domain, and the range. All right, but in this case, the range is going to be the same answer every time. All right, so this is the basic form of a logarithm. Notice I don't have any plus something on the outside. Okay, and the vertical asymptote is going to be h. And I want you to notice that the formula is x minus h. Okay? All right, so if it's x minus 2, then the vertical asymptote is x equals 2, not negative 2. So it's going to be basically the opposite of what you see. And the x-intercept, so if it's x minus 2, is going to be 2 plus 1 or 3 comma 0. All right? All right, let's go on. So looking at this, what is the vertical asymptote? So there's no h in here that's being added to it. So the vertical asymptote is x equals 0. What's the x-intercept? The x-intercept is the h, which is 0, plus 1. So that's going to give me 1. So my vertical, I'm sorry, my x-intercept is going to be 1, comma, 0. The domain, okay, the domain is going to be related to the vertical asymptote. It's going to be uh, from 0 to infinity, okay? Or if you saw it, it's x is greater than 0, which is okay. Notice there's no equal to bar. The range is all real numbers, so just negative infinity, infinity. All right, so how do I graph this? So there is a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So there's a vertical asymptote here. All right, it has an x-intercept at 1, 0, so it's crossing there. Now, after this, all of these, we're not doing anything weird with these. We're doing some keeping these very simple. All of these have the same shape. There's a vertical asymptote there, and it just goes off like that. That's it. That's all we're doing with this. They're all going to have the same shape. They're all going to go up. They're all going to go to the right. That's it. Okay, so the only thing that's going to move is where that x-intercept is and where the vertical asymptote is. That's all we're doing with these. Okay, yes, it can get more complicated, but we're not making it more complicated. All right, let's look at the next one. So here, what is the vertical asymptote? It's related to this 2. So the vertical asymptote is x equals 2. The x-intercept you basically add 1 to the 2, so it's going to be 3. So it's 3 comma 0 is the x-intercept. The domain is related to the vertical asymptote, so it's greater than 2. So it's 2 to infinity, right? And the range is all real numbers, negative infinity, positive infinity. All right, so we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. We have an x-intercept at 3. So, it's just going to go up, like that. Actually, it's probably shallower than that, but that's perfectly okay. And I kind of missed, but you'll get over it. I'll get over it. As long as you have a point there, and I can see you try to make it, that's good. Here, we have a vertical asymptote. Remember, it's opposite of that, so it's x equals negative 4 for the vertical asymptote. The x-intercept is h plus 1, so it's negative 3, comma, 0. You're adding 1 to this value. So negative 3 plus 1, right? And the domain is restricted to this, and it's greater than that. So negative 4 to infinity. The range is all real numbers again. All right, and then we have what? Uh, vertical asymptote of negative 4. We have an x-intercept at negative 3. And we're just going to go up like that. That's it. That's all I'm asking you to do. The most important feature of this graph is the vertical asymptote. X and Z, not so much. Okay, but it's something you should know. But the vertical asymptote is the most important aspect and the basic shape. I need for you to get used to this basic shape for a logarithm. Right, that's the basic shape for a log. Oh, notice all of these have different bases. But when I graph these, I graph them the same way. Okay. That doesn't mean that's exactly correct to graph them the same way. But the basic shape 
is going to look the same no matter what the base is. Okay? All right, that's it.